Today, I want to take a little bit of time to talk about Unreal Engine's asset registry. I'm here in my inventory series completed project because it's going to be the easiest way to show this off. What does the asset registry do? Well, it is a way to access the assets in your project easily from your code and from your blueprint. As an example, I have in my game mode here, when I save and load the inventory, I have to use the asset registry to get the names of all the objects in my inventory because these objects are data assets and if anybody's seen any of my videos at all before i do love me some data assets so this entire inventory system is based on data assets so i have this item assets folder in which i keep all my uh, data assets for my items but since the inventory then uses references to these assets directly i can't save those because these are just places in memory so what I do when I save these is I use the get display name function that every object has, and then I save that name instead. And then when loading, I can use the asset registry right here to get an asset by object path. And then I can create a new object and add that back into the inventory for the loading purposes. So this kind of thing is where the asset registry really shines, but it's not just for saving and loading, which might be a little bit confusing if you haven't followed along with the entire inventory series so let's do another quick example that is maybe a little bit more straightforward the entire inventory series that we've made has the items being data assets but what if i want one shop in the game that has every item that i've made so far or maybe i want one shop in the game that has every single weapon in the game or every single whatever in the game right ideally you should order your data assets in their own separate subfolders uh, to work with this so you would probably want to have like armor you can decide whether or not you need to spell that with a u or not and then we can move that there and then we have uh, that's about it actually and then we have weapons in which we can take the swords and so on and so forth right we can make potions put that in the potions folder and then we'll just uh, make normal like miscellaneous items go in there now, using the asset registry, we can put in a path, just like you would be able to do in Windows or Mac OS or Linux or whatever, uh, and just say, hey, get me everything inside of this folder. And then we can do with that as we please. So we can say, get me everything inside the item assets folder, and that gets you every item in the game. Or we can say, get me everything in the item assets and then the armor folder specifically. So let's do that in uh, this shop blueprint that we have so we can uh, get the shop here and on begin play what we do is we create this whole like inventory uh, situation and let's just add some things to this inventory so again if you haven't followed along with the inventory uh, series we'll worry about that in a moment uh, but let's get the assets registry that's just a function that you can pretty much access wherever you want and that lets you use the functions in the asset registry so we can get and then we can get assets uh, get assets by class so we could even do that we can get the class path name and that allows you to with the full path or uh, package name of a specific class to get all the assets of that specific class so we're using this for data assets but if you want to use this for uh, custom assets as well or just like static meshes or skeletal meshes or materials or whatever you can do it for that as well uh, but what i want to do is i want to get assets by path so here we put in the package path and it's always going to start with forward slash game because that is the name of the package content folder itself and then we do items item assets but if we want to prevent any type of weird typos what we can also do is we can right click on any folder and then we can just simply copy the folders path and then when we paste it in you will see this will be game items item assets and that will get us all the assets within that specific folder and now that we have that let's just see our out assets data uh, in a for each loop and we can break that open and we get a bunch of information out of it so for the time being let's just uh, print string just to show you this and we're going to be printing the package name of everything that we find 
So now it should be printing the package name of everything within the item underscore assets folder. So that's all the items we have in the game on begin play. And it does sort two rock and uh, one other thing that I didn't uh, read. So what could be the issue here? The issue is that these are inside of their own folders, which uh, means that they're only going to be supplying the first thing in every folder. So if we uh, look at this again, we can see we have sort to rock and health potion. So we get in sort oh, we get sort two, which is the last one actually, not the first one visually. Uh, but then we have health potion. Uh, we had rock. Uh, it didn't even show armor at all. But if we go back in here and we see and we say recursive being true, it's going to also be looking through the folders within the folders. And now when we start playing, we can see it prints out the name of every single thing we have. And not just that, it actually gives you the entire path to that specific asset, not just the name. So the package name is the full path to the assets. Now, instead of breaking this struct, uh, which only has some information in it, we can actually uh, get the assets, which will get us a generic object reference, because of course, this could be any type of object. This could be a static mesh, this could be a skeletal mesh, this could be a material, this could be whatever. So we're going to need to uh, cast that to a item in our case, just a generic item. I've got all these other classes as well, just so the generic item will do for now. Again, this is fairly specific to my inventory series, so if you haven't watched that, don't worry about it. And then my inventory component has a an item function, so we can just add an item. And now that we have cast this to an item, we can add it to the inventory so now this shop when we open it up we'll have one of every type of item in the game so let's check that out opening up this shop has indeed a bunch of different items and of course if we want to change this now to only have uh, the weapons in it it's as easy as just going into our weapons folder uh, copy the path and go into this node and just paste the path in there and now, without doing anything uh, complicated at all, anything at all, like going back into a bunch of different shops to update their uh, inventory stock or whatever, because it is entirely based on the asset registry, uh, we can just go in here and now it's only selling the weapons. So if you have weapon shops that get stocked throughout your game, it's probably much easier to make them just get the assets from the asset registry and populate the shops like that. And then you can add in some other logic if you want to to check whether or not certain items should be added due to like event flags how far people are into the game and you can even uh fairly simply just divide this up into new folders so this will be like beginner weapons and then we can have medium weapons and so on and so forth so that way you can load these in in batches depending on if the player has the right level for them or something like that now, one thing to be aware of before we close out this little overview video, and that is to do with anything regarding using the asset registry like this uh, for my save load system, but also for this kind of shop system. And that is, if you change the location of the assets in your project hierarchy, it's going to potentially break some stuff. So if we just change the location of this sword to being in the armor, category for instance in here it's not going to be in this shop anymore which is not that big a deal right because it's just a shop so it's not going to be in there but if you do this for the saving and the loading system so in this video itself i changed some things about the uh, item asset folder here so the assets are now going to be in different places than they were when i last did a save game so the load game is going to be looking for places in this project that don't exist anymore and is going to fail loading those assets and the load game is not going to properly load the inventory anymore so it is very important especially if you use this for a save and load game function uh, to make sure that you start with a very well structured folder structure right from the start otherwise you're gonna go and run into some issues where at some point maybe some of the save games that you've made are going to have to simply be broken or you're going to need to hard code in conversion from one folder to the other which is also a pain to have to do so avoid that at all costs of course there is a bunch more stuff that the asset registry uh, can do we can 
check for uh, certain assets. We can see if it is loading certain assets. We can do a lot of stuff. It's really a powerful tool to have. This is just a general overview of some of the more useful things that are practically implementable right away for you to look at. And a very big thank you to all of my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my Cave Student tier supporters, Earl Monteville Erno, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 